All right, guys, we're back again with another adventure today. Today, we're going to be talking about zone based firewall rules and pie hole. Let's get into this video. <laughs> guys so the first thing that we're gonna do is I wanted to give you a heads up if this doesn't work for you then you might have to redo your pie hole just giving you a heads up I'm like oh well it worked before but there's a problem or whatever sometimes even if you uninstall pie hole from your Raspberry Pi or whatever it's on sometimes you have to do a clean install of the operating system that's running your pie hole whether it's a Raspberry Pi um, uh, running Raspberry Raspberry OS um, then you might have to redo it and then reinstall Pi Hole and then it should work again. Sometimes it just gets weird. It doesn't happen very ever. I think it's only happened to me twice after so many years that I've been using it now, over six, seven years or something like that. I uh, haven't had any problems lately except with the new version of Raspberry Pi 6, the sixth version. I updated every one of the Raspberry Pis that I manage. Um, thinking uh, it was just a thing. Thank God it's just family. I was able to give them internet and fix them, but they bricked him. The regular command, you know, um, pie hole dash up, did it. Like done tons of other time versions. Every single Raspberry Pi, the Pi wasn't bricked, but the um, pie hole software itself would just not work anymore. No matter what I did, I tried uninstalling it. Whatever. The only way I could fix it was doing a complete reinstall of the operating system and a fresh install of Raspberry Pi, boom, worked fine, no problems. After that, new updates have come out. Now you have to do sudo, which is, you know, the admin command on uh, Raspbian OS. sudo piehole dash up, works fine, never had a problem. Done it for two versions already since the sixth version and not had one problem. So I think it was just a glitch with that update, that version, but yeah just wanted to give you a heads up out there. So there's two ways that we can basically do this. First of all, you can just do your whole entire network if you want to. So you, all you gotta do is go to internet, click your internet, scroll down, and you can change your DNS server right here, primary server, and you can change it. Mine on this one, this is mother-in-law's house, is 1.1.1, 0 to 0 to Cloudflare or you can change it to your pie hole. The reason I don't like this, just in case there's any problems, you can have a backup pie hole or whatever, but if there's any problems, the pie hole goes down for some reason and you don't can't use your DNS anymore, then your router is not accessible online. So to fix it, I like to do the networks themselves and keep this as Cloudflare right here. Just so out of any problems happen with the pie hole, no matter what, I can always go into the networks and switch them to use the routers, uh, this address right here. So if we go to networks, let's just do uh, IOTU just for faults, more. I could just change it to auto. And if we change it to auto, so if we change it to auto, the DNS server will automatically be signed uh, by the DHCP server. So that means it's gonna use whatever the router uses. It's just gonna set the same. So basically turn it to auto. I can do that, hit apply changes and boom, everybody has internet again. No ad blocking, but everybody has internet. So I can do that remotely. Log into the router, set the network back to auto and everybody's good again. But if I had it to the internet one and it had a problem, I would have to be on site to literally fix it. And I don't wanna deal with that. So that's why I do it. So. Make sure, you know, if you set a pie hole, you watch my pie hole setup video up here. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a new one because there's little changes from this version six now, as I'm saying, pie hole version six, there's a little different changes. We'll be doing a video on that, but most of it's just the same. So don't worry about it. They're just, they rename some stuff. Uh, default gateway. So what I like to do is go to the networks and I'll change my Raspberry Pi right here. So I'll uh, set it to here to use the Raspberry Pi as the DNS server. Now on zone based firewall rules, since this Raspberry Pi is on the default network. So if we go to networks, the Raspberry Pi, if I go to here, is on the net default network. On truly and on advanced system, or if you're just a guy that wants to have the balls to the wall stuff, it'd be better just to have a VLAN that's only for DNS. 
So your DNS server lives on that VLAN. That is the way to go. Separates the traffic even better and is beast mode, I'm telling you. And you, I would only give it maybe one IP address because it's only um, usable on that network because it only needs the DNS server and nothing else should be connected to it anyways. That's, that's, that's the way I would do it. And that's what my network is. But so what we're gonna do on this one, since it's on the default, we gotta make firewall rules on the zone base. So this is security. We're gonna go to the zone base, as you can see right here. Certain devices, as I'm saying, I don't have a lot of routers too, so I have to show you what I've already done. But we can make a new network just to show you, or a new firewall rule just to show you. So if the zone is the internal right here that has the Raspberry Pi, I need to make sure that these other zones are able to have access. So we'll just create a zone right now. I'm just gonna go create a new zone. And we'll just call this test, create new zone, boom. Oh, okay, this will test right. Test. I'm not gonna add any networks right now. It doesn't matter, because I can add that later or whatever. We're just gonna do it. I can get all, this is nice too. You can get all your firewall rules ready before you drag a network into it, just to make sure you, they come in and everything's either secure or ready just to work as soon as you drag it, put a network into it. I mean by drag is selecting a network and putting it over to it, basically. So that's done. Test is right here. Now, what I'm gonna do, see so here's test. We need to go to the external. And um, you don't have to do this, but if you wanna block it for your IoT stuff, um, you can create a, a block, um, D, all the other DNSs, so it only uses, no matter what, uses your pile. But we'll do that after this. I'll show, actually, I'll show you right now. So this is what we do the first rule. If you wanna just make sure that no matter what, it has to use your pie hole. But like I said, if your pie hole goes down, then it, you're screwed then. But we're gonna block the Google DNSs right now. That's what we're gonna do. So we'll block for all the Google stuff. Test, we'll just do, well, actually no, we'll go to Google, Google, DNS, oops, DNS, block. And then the network is test. And now we're gonna go to block and it's the external. We're gonna go to IP addresses and we're gonna do the 8.8.8.8. And we're gonna hit add. This is Google's IPv4 DNS addresses. We're gonna go, I think it's 4.4 or, oh man, what is that? I think it's 4.4. 4.4.8.8. I think I'm pretty dang sure it is. Oh, let me just look so I know. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, gosh, I get 8.4.4, yeah. 8.8.4.4, perfect. We'll hit add. Now, I could just say, hey, block all the external DNSs, but I only wanna block the Google ones because some of the IT dev IoT devices, this is why this one right here that we're doing right here should only usually be in the IoT network, which your Google stuff should be, or anything that's hard-coded. And so in case, like I said, if we added all the, if I just took these out and just put any, then if the network did go down, like I said, and I did do the auto to use the Googles, that wouldn't work because I said block all DNS addresses. So that means I'd be blocking Cloudflares too or whoever, or the default by the router. So I kind of just want to hit 8.8, 4.4 because I'm not going to use it. I'm a Cloudflare guy. I'm not a Google guy. I'm a Cloudflare guy. So that's who I'm going to use. So I'm going to block these. And then we're going to go to port object and what we can do is go to Pi-hole DNS, but we're gonna do that later. We're gonna do custom, and because this is just for Google, I'm just gonna go to DNS. So that's DNS, port 53, or you can just go back down to here, custom, and put in port, you know, oops, custom, there you go. And just type in 53, because port 53 is DNS. So then we could just hit add. And we're gonna make sure that we also, you could do all, but TCP, UDP, it's the same thing. I mean, all protocols, I mean, just hit this, just to make it good. 
and then Google, we got Google DNS blocked right here. So this is gonna make sure that if anything is hard coded with Google DNS, it's gonna say, nope, we don't want you to use it anymore. You're gonna have to use the one that we allow. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our pie hole next. And you can have a profile for it too. I kind of like to do that. So under uh, network objects, I created one called pie hole port 53 because port is 53. I just like it to word name so I know it's just an anal thing. You don't have to do this. You can just put port 53 like we did a minute ago, but I just like doing it. So we have pie hole port 53. We go back to security, go back down, just go to test. I can just create a new entry, it doesn't matter, but for your guys sake, I'm just gonna go test. We're gonna create a new entry and then test. Two, oops, two pi, H-O-L-E. Oh gosh, I should have checked what's their IP address of their pie hole too. Let's go see what their IP address of their pie hole is. Just to make sure, we'll copy that. Control C, this is static, so I don't have to worry about this changing, but we need to make sure. So now I'll go back to security again. I'm just gonna create the rule right here. You don't even have to click it. I'm just gonna go down here, whatever. We're gonna do test. 2 pi to le and then we're going to go to the network we want is test and we want everything to be able to use it so we're going to keep any any because we need all the devices on whatever test is to be able to access the pie hole to get dns we're going to hit allow and then yes we're going to hit internal both to make sure that auto return traffic is on and then we're going to hit the ip address we want to set the pie holes ip address in there We'll hit add. Then we're gonna hit under object. Like I said, you can just type in port 53 under specific, or I like to do my perfect one and just do pile, which is 53 anyways. It's just an anal thing I like to do. So that's what I'm doing. So, and then we're gonna make sure this is TDP, UDP. You can set all, but I like to just put TDP slash UDP. And then we're gonna hit add entry. And then guess what? Bob is your uncle and that's working now. And like I said, I made it in this with all the rules, but if we go to test, there it is. <gasps> test pie hole. So it's allow both UDP, UDP, test, any, any internal. The destination is the IP address of the pie hole and the port that it's gonna be using is port 53. And now everything on that network now can use the pie hole freaking awesome i i hope you guys like these videos like comment subscribe hope this was easy for you remember if it's not working for you then something else is going on either mess with your settings or your pie holes bust and better just to do a clean install to set up a pie hole to be honest you can back up your configuration settings too but as long as you knew it worked before but um for all your white lists and everything like that. But a pie hole is so easy to set up. Man, those things can be set up in half a second. Not half a second, let's be honest, probably like 10 minutes. 10 minutes, no big whoop. But yeah, that's it. You know, I make these goodies for you guys, so I hope you guys, you know, like what I'm doing for you. And I hope you and your family are having a rock and rolling day. So peace out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.